it's okay. I'm just looking at the state of that button, the surface of it's a little bit rough. I think it's where it's had glue on it actually in the past. Right, so that's all good. Film Advance is sitting there nicely. The chrome trim can go on the top of the camera body at this stage. And rewind down here, I think. Let's put the rewind on first. Oh, we've got easy access. It's the rewind shaft, the inner rewind shaft, the bush, and its two screws, one of which we've certainly got, and the second one there. This is quite worn. It's worn right through that chrome plating there. It means there was probably a bit of grit or rubbish in there. I'll lubricate that with a bit of uh, that graphite grease, I think. Shaft through here. The inner. I'll lubricate this with a bit of synthetic grease, just lubricate the bottom of that inner and there's a little retainer clip here provides a bit of tension to stop it sliding and rattling around and sliding loose that slides in, it's got a tab on it so it only runs in one place, it's keyed together there we have it, here's our shaft pop that in the top of the camera get our two screws in place Both screws in place, they can be done up tight. That's good. What have I done with my chrome trim? I may have actually taken that away while I was sorting out the other pieces of trim. I bet I have. What an idiot. Here's our chrome trim. The strap lug is bent at the end of the body. I want to straighten that up. That's not uncommon and it just means the camera's been dropped. It's not badly bent as these things go. Just enough to catch my attention. Two screws hold that in place. holds our chrome trim in place on the top of the camera at the same time. Right, normally I find that pushing this bracket as far towards the end of the camera as possible is the right place for it to go. That's good. That's sitting there nicely now. The cocking rack. We have our nice shiny new cocking rack. And before I put that in, I want to pre-tension the film advance. And I'll do that by... Where are we? Here we are. By lifting up the lock lever. Swing that to one side. Hold back the... Release lever, rotate this one full turn, drop those levers back in position. At this stage, our chrome trim can go back on the base of the camera. Of course we've got a new piece of chrome trim because the original one was buggered up. Let's screw this in position. Nickel plated screws. Of course, one of them 
it's going to go down the end there where that hole had been damaged, hadn't it? We'll deal with that in a second. Might be needing two new screws by the time we're done here. I should have two chrome plated screws like this here and I'm not 100% sure that I do. Here's one. That looks like a nickel plated one. That's the other chrome. And I was expecting to be two screws short, but I'm at least one screw short. I'm one screw short, that's okay. Those screws aren't the prettiest, but then again, they're going to be under the leatherette, so no one is ever going to know unless you tell them. Let's find a replacement for that missing screw. I'll have one here in my tray of odd bits. The mortal remains of any number of cameras. That one. Yeah, that one's not enthusiastic to go in because that hole is slightly off centre now because of it's been re-tapped. That looks good. At the base of the camera, at this point, I can put my advanced lever back in place if I had only put the rubber pad in there first. Well, that took about two seconds. Got my three screws for my film advanced shaft. Here now, come on camera keep up, which end are we at? We're at that end. Let's put this film advance lever in place. Run a screw in there, get its two mates in, and do those screws up too. And all three are in position, just nip them out lightly. I haven't got my leatherette in yet, so no point going crazy. That's our film advance connected at the base, and I'll check that it moves smoothly. Yeah, that's very good, and the amount of tension on that film advance is, is just ideal. There's nothing wrong with that. We certainly wouldn't want more. So, taking our shutter cocking rack, I'm going to apply a little bit of synthetic grease to the underside special attention to the teeth. Drop that in place and see if we can get two teeth engaged now. Interesting. That really doesn't want to go in there. It's like there's not enough space. Slacken that screw off. That's a very snug fit. Let's see what's happening. I'll try the film advance at that point. I want to see how that well that moves. That moves very smoothly. That was good. That's very good. Now I'll just backing off my screws at the strap lug end. I want to be able to swing this chrome plate away slightly. I'm just going to Move my film advance, slacken the two screws here, move my film advance shaft as far forward as I can get it, as far to the end of the body as I can get it. Do my two screws up, check the action of that film advance again. That is moving nicely, that's very good. I'll do it my strap 
plug again the end of the body there's a clamp down plate that goes on here that keeps everything in place and it's caught my attention because it's not dead flat it's been bent up at the end that's not right and that is part of the reason that the cocking rack was damaged at this end the cocking rack was able to lift off the gear so this piece is damaged I'm gonna to have to straighten that out it's just slightly less than straight it's got a bend in it that is probably why the shutter cocking rack died in this particular camera the shutter cocking rack of course is held in position at the other end by the strap lug here which I can put into position now and then I will turn my attention to straightening out that little hold down now how would that come to be bent it's hard to know somebody may have done something nasty to it um, you know you, you could wedge your screwdriver under the end of it and then lift it up if you thought you needed to but it's certainly bent up so that means that there's there's too much clearance at this point yeah there's a lot of flap okay let's see if I can straighten that up Where you need more clearance at a place like that, you know, if something's running too tight and you need more clearance, you do it with shim washers. You don't do it by bending stuff, typically. I'll try that. It's held down with a screw at this end. nickel plated screw see that's a that's not a good fit that's on back to front that's why let's shift that over the way it should be should be flip that side and that side should be down Well that should be right now, I've turned it round in the right direction, it looks like a good fit. I'll run the other screw in, which in this case is a post that guides our film release button. I can see from the top of it someone's grabbed it with a pair of pliers, it's a bit out of shape. Let's see if that works. That's tight. Now, at what point is it tight? Let's slacken that screw off and that one. Try again. Still tight. I don't think it's that. So let's tighten those two back down. Slacken off the screws here and here try again that's it so the clearance problem is at this end not here so I think someone had bent it up at this end thinking that was holding them up when really the problem lay here and we need a shim under something let's just leave that screw loose and tighten that screw up see how it behaves it sticks let's tighten this screw up leave this screw loose Try it. Didn't stick quite so bad. I think we need a shim under here for a start. A shim washer. There would have been a brass 
washer there at one stage on this camera and it ain't present which means that somebody lost it all right let me find one let's see if that makes a difference yeah still a bit reluctant isn't it let's try slackening that screw up that's beautiful now okay so got our washer under there the brass washer I mentioned was missing we'll slide a shim washer under this side What have I got? Will that shim wash your foot? I've got some here that weren't original retina washers, they're a bit larger and outside diameter there a bit they're not quite so don't fit in every application let's try that one that will fit try the film advance beautiful Let's have a look at the bottom of the body here because I was a bit suspect suspected that that film advance might have been slightly bent. I'm watching to see if it scuffs anything. No, it doesn't. It is slightly bent, but it's not scuffing anything. That appears to work nicely. I'll make sure that those screws are all tight. Good. Okay, so I think at this stage I'll get my focus helical all assembled and back in the camera body. That would be a useful thing to do. Right, I'll screw the inner and outer helical together and get them correctly aligned. I'm looking at my alignment marks inside and out. And I am... Oh... Two or three thread starts away from where it should be. Let's try there. No, I'm at least one that way. Another one. Another one. That's it. Just looking at the inner and outer and the, the surfaces are parallel at that point. So they're correct. So that's the correct orientation of those two components. While I've got them there, I will lubricate those with a bit of helical grease. I'll back that most of the way out. Normally I'll put the grease on in about half a dozen spots around the perimeter. You don't need to clog the threads with grease. It's actually counterproductive. It's smooth, it's instantly a lot stiffer than it was previously. It's nice and smooth though in its action. That should be good. Now this needs to fit into the focus mount here. Normally put a white around this inside surface 
that'll distribute itself evenly given time. And there are two posts in here, the guide posts. That go up here and here. Now that's that way up in the body. That's the top. This is the top here. Get that in position. And check that it moves smoothly. That's good. I'll put its retainer plate in place and do up the four screws that hold it. 